Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Science, and today I want to talk about commutator algebra in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Operators in quantum mechanics don't always commute. A consequence of this is that the commutator of two operators becomes a key quantity in quantum mechanics. The most famous one is the canonical commutation relation between position and momentum. But the importance of commutators goes well beyond this. The aim of this video is to explore some properties of commutators with two objectives. The first is to learn a number of relations involving commutators of operators that will prove extremely useful in our study of quantum mechanics. And the second is that this video should provide good practice for you to become more familiar with both operators and their commutators. Let's go! The key quantity today is the commutator. The commutator of two linear operators A and B is written between square brackets like this, and is equal to the product AB minus the product BA. If you've seen commutators before, you've probably seen the one between position and momentum operators, which is equal to IH bar. However, commutators are central in quantum mechanics and appear in many other cases beyond position and momentum. Today's video is pretty straightforward. We'll prove a number of results involving commutators. This will serve a double purpose. First, it will provide a good reference for results that we use constantly in many other videos. And second, it will be good practice for you to become more familiar with manipulating commutators and operators, which is a very important skill when studying quantum mechanics. The strategy I'll follow is that I'll quote the result that we want to prove at the beginning of each slide, and only after I will go on to prove it. So a good way for you to approach this would be to pause the video at the beginning of each slide, have a go yourself at proving the result, and only checking the answer afterwards. The first relation we want to prove is that the commutator of A and B is equal to the negative of the commutator in the reverse order. Again, if you want to have a go at this before you check out my proof, just pause the video here. Otherwise, let's get started with the proof. The left hand side is the commutator of A and B. Expanding the commutator we get AB minus BA. We can now take out a common factor of minus 1 to get minus BA minus AB and it is simply minus the commutator of B and A. And this completes the proof. The next relation says that the commutator of A with B plus C is equal to the commutator of A with B plus the commutator of A with C. For the proof, we again start with the left-hand side. Expanding, we get A times B plus C minus B plus C times A. Multiplying through these brackets, we get four terms, AB, plus AC minus BA minus CA. Reordering, we get AB minus BA plus AC minus CA. These two terms give the commutator of A with B, and these two terms give the commutator of A with C. And this completes the proof. The next relation is that the commutator of A with b times c is equal to b times the commutator of a with c plus the commutator of a with b all multiplied by c. For the proof, we start again with the left-hand side. Expanding the commutator, we get abc minus bca. For the next step, we first copy the first term, abc. We now subtract and add the same term, minus bac plus bac. Overall, these two terms add to zero, so I'm just adding zero, which is something I can do. And we finally have the final term, minus BCA. Starting with the first two terms, I will take C as a common factor. And for the next two terms, I'll take B as a common factor. We can now see that the brackets are commutators, so we get this commutator times C plus B times this commutator. And this completes the proof. This relation doesn't look as simple as the ones we've discussed earlier, but actually is extremely useful in quantum mechanics, so you'll find yourself using it all the time. For this reason, it's worth remembering it, and there's actually a relatively simple way to do that. What you do is you first write down all possible commutators that only involve two operators, while keeping the operators in the same order as in the original expression. In this case, we only have the A operator in the first entry, and then the B and C operators in the second entry which leads to two commutators, one here and one here. What you do next is that to each term, you add the remaining operators outside the commutator 
and the key point is that we need to respect the order of the original products. In our case, C here has to multiply from the right because it goes after B, and B here has to multiply from the left because it goes before C. A related result is that the commutator of AB with C is equal to A times the commutator of B with C plus the commutator of A with C times B. The proof follows the same line as the one we just did, so I will not repeat it here, but feel free to have a go yourself. And again, you can remember this relation by using the same strategy we just discussed for the original relation. And this is the final relation I want to consider. The adjoint of the commutator of A and B is equal to the commutator of the adjoint of B with the adjoint of A. To see this, we start again with the left-hand side. We next expand the commutator as usual, and we can rewrite it as two separate terms. The next step relies on a general property of the adjoint of a product of two operators x, y, which is equal to the adjoint of each operator in reverse order. If you can't remember this property, we actually proved it in our video on adjoint operators, so you can just follow the link in the description. But using it here, we can write the first term as b dagger a dagger, and the second term as minus a dagger b dagger. Putting this together, we get the commutator of b dagger with a dagger, and this completes the proof. And this is it. Here I have the list of commutator algebra relations that we've just derived. We use these relations constantly in quantum mechanics, so make sure you have them at hand. As you can imagine, there are plenty of other useful commutation algebra relations, and here I have additional ones we haven't proved today. However, all the proofs work along the same lines of what we've seen today, so if you want to get extra practice, I would encourage you to have a go at proving some of these yourself. Just like before, it is relatively easy to remember the form of these expressions. If we take the second one as an example, we can follow the same strategy we discussed earlier. We first write out all possible commutators of only two operators, which in this case involve A with B, A with C, and A with D. We then add all remaining operators outside the commutator while respecting the order of the original expression. So in the first term, both C and D go to the right of the commutator because they come after B. In the second term, B goes before C, while D goes after C. And in the third term, B and C both come before D. Overall, this is a rather long number of commutator algebra relations, so you may wonder how to approach this. What I would say is that although it isn't essential to memorize them, doing so can be very convenient because you'll use them a lot. Commutators feature in many problems. You can see the relations we've derived today in action in some of our other videos. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe.